Teammate Analytics version 6 includes several new features and enhancements that are all driven by popular requests from our users. First, the biggest change for version 6 is enabling Teammate Analytics to break through the 1 million row barrier of Excel to allow you to analyse really large data sets. You might already know that since 2007, Excel has had a limit of 1,048,575 rows. And whilst this is more than enough for most analytics tasks, sometimes our users have data that just can't fit in Excel. So in version 6, we've completely re-engineered the custom modules to work with very large files. Let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to start off by creating a new custom module. This process is exactly the same as it was in the previous versions, but the first thing you'll probably notice is we've got this new data source section at the top of the custom module. This allows us to work with both Excel files and other data formats so that we can analyze more than a million rows of data, more than you would normally fit in an Excel file. So I'm going to switch to use a delimited text file and I'm going to open this CSV file, which has 5.8 million rows of data. We have a preview which allows you to see what data is in that file. This is very useful when the file can't even be opened in something like Notepad because it's too big. So we can get a feel for what's in the data and what columns there are. Preparing sheets, just like we did in version 5.2 and previously, I can use the auto generate button and this will scan all the columns in the data. You'll notice we now have an extra mask column when we're using delimited text files. And this is for things like date and time columns. In this case, I'm going to set the year column to a numeric. We don't need all of these columns, so I'm going to delete the ones I'm not going to use. Now, just as I would in previous versions, I'm just going to add the custom module tests. So let's add an over amount test. Let's look for anything where the departure delay was more than 10 hours. So in the data format we've got here, that is 600 minutes. Another new feature you'll notice is this button here. This allows us to customize the format of the pivot table that's produced by this test. So in previous versions, you'd get a simple pivot table which summarized the number of amounts that were over the limit and the number of amounts under the limit. Now we can completely customize the format of that pivot table. So in this case, I'm going to remove the group by here and I'm going to filter the entire document by items which were over the amount of 600. Then I'm going to group by the airline and I'm going to leave the calculation the way it is to give us the number of flight delays. Secondly, let's add an exception report test. Here I'm going to extract anything where cancelled is equal to 1. And in the data, which we can see in the preview, anything which is a cancelled flight rather than a delayed flight will have a 1 in that column. We're going to use the report output for this. You'll notice the icon on this button has changed because now this will link us to the report output settings. So here I'm going to just extract the ones where the criteria was met. And we can choose the order of the records that are going to get output. So I'm going to just output them in original order. And we've also got a record limit on here. I'm just going to get the first 50,000 records. Let's also add a summary. We'll summarize by the flight number. We'll look at the count of record ID. This just gives us the number of flights. And I'm going to do the sum of departure delay, which will give us the total amount of delays in minutes for those flight numbers. And finally, let's just add a visualization on this. So I'm going to look at the delays by day of the week. I'm going to sort that in ascending order. I'm going to show the number of flights that were delayed. And I'm also going to show, based on the airline, a grouping using a stacked chart. I'm going to turn all these tests on. Then we can save and run this module. When you run the module, Teammate Analytics will automatically determine whether it can analyze it using Excel or whether we need to use the new method that we've developed for files that are over a million rows long. If the file is over a million rows long, you'll see this little icon here, which shows our database settings. We're using a database behind the scenes to analyze this data. You can click on this to update where that database is going to save and what you want to do with that database file when it's finished the analysis. And exactly like previous versions, TMAT Analytics will now run the module. Looking at the outputs, you'll notice that not a lot has changed since the previous version. 
We've tried to keep everything as similar as possible and change the interface as little as we can. So we still have information about the module that was run, our audit trail showing the columns selected, the analysis we've run, and the visual audit trail using screenshots at the bottom. Looking at our over amount results, you'll see the customized pivot table where we changed the standard default format to one that was a bit richer. So here we've got a summary of the airlines, just showing the flights where the delay was over 10 hours. And even though we're dealing with 5.8 million rows of data, you can still play with the pivot table. We can add in other details almost instantly. We can even add in the flight number here to show another level of detail. You can also still drill down to get to the detail, exactly as we could in previous versions. For the exception report results, you'll see that we get a report output as we requested, and because we limited the number of records to 50,000, we've got a very visible warning to make sure that the auditor understands that this is not complete. For the summarized test, we have the summary by flight number with the number of flights that were delayed and the total delay time. And just to prove that we are using 5.8 million rows of data, you can see here the count of flight delays is 5.8 million there. We can move to the visualized results. So this is showing by day of the week, the number of flights that were delayed and the different colored bands show the different airlines that make that up. Again, we can select and drill down on those if we want to. We can also drill down on the pivot table as well. You might notice that when we're dealing with over a million rows of data, we don't have a source data worksheet here. You can still get to this full data set by going to the data tab in Excel and opening the Power Pivot tool. From here, you can filter, sort, or play with the data just as you might do in a normal Excel workbook. The only difference here is that we have 5.8 million rows of data and we're not limited to the 1 million that would normally fit in Excel. Teammate Analytics uses a variety of different pieces of content. We have custom modules, test library tests, we have word, date, normalization rule, and formula lists. In previous versions of Teammate Analytics, we effectively had one list for each of these, which the user maintained. And if they wanted to add Teammate Analytics content, they could do this using the Add Standard Lists buttons. Now all content is split into three categories, user-generated content, company-generated content, and teammate analytics generated content. This gives us the benefit that, first of all, the teammate analytics content is more accessible. No longer do you need to add the teammate analytics content to your lists to be able to use those. And some of our customers who are larger organizations want to be able to create and distribute their own content for their users. And the way the content is now organized makes this much, much easier to distribute and maintain. So let's look at how this appears within teammate analytics. If we look at the custom modules drop down, you'll see our modules use three different icons. We have the head icon here, which indicates that this is a user module. This icon here shows my company logo. So this is showing that these modules have been created and distributed by my company. And the TA icon indicates content which has been included and shipped with Teammate Analytics. If we open the custom module manager, you'll see again those icons help to differentiate the groups of modules that we have within the module manager. Let's look at options, which is where the rest of the content is stored. So you'll see now, for example, with the dates tab, we have sub tabs for user date lists, for company date lists, and for teammate analytics date lists. The same for words lists, normalization rules, and formulas. If you don't have any company content, that tab simply won't appear. Let's see how that appears when we run a test. I'm going to use the exception report tool to look for instances where the posted date is equal to one of our holiday dates. Again, this process is exactly the same as it was in the previous version, but when I click Add Standard Lists, you'll see the three tabs again. So I can add in my finance team's days off, I can add in my UK public holidays, and I can add in other country public holidays if I wanted to, all from three separate sets of lists. And if I open the test library, you'll see similarly the icons on the left hand side indicate whether the content has come from Teammate Analytics, whether it's been generated by the user, or whether it's been distributed by the user's company. And the icon that we use to differentiate the company content can even be customized to use your own company logo. Sometimes you might find that you've got a column which contains a mixture of dates and times, and you want to analyze the dates and the times separately. So we've added a new simple data cleansing tool to deal with this situation. First of all, I'm just going to take a copy of this column. And then the first column, I'm going to use manipulate fields, manipulate dates, and we're going to use the convert date time to date tool. 
and all this will do is it will strip out the time portion and leave just the dates. The other option does the opposite, strips out the dates and leaves just the times ready for analysis. Finally, we've added some new integration between Teammate Plus and Teammate Analytics to make working between the two software packages a little bit more seamless. First of all, any work papers that are open from Teammate Plus and subsequently have Teammate Analytics routines or procedures run on them will get flagged within Teammate Plus to show that data analytics have been performed on them. Secondly, if you take a work paper from Teammate Plus, run an analytic such as a custom module which creates a new workbook, that workbook can automatically be uploaded back into Teammate to the same location as the original work paper. This avoids the need to save the file locally and then separately upload it into Teammate afterwards. For more information on this new feature, check out the What's New videos for Teammate Plus.